Session 3, Before the Deluge, 11,000 to 6,000 years ago. Part 1, Prehistory. Following the Kebaran cave dwellers, the semi-sedentary Neolithic Natufians invented agriculture, the wheel, jewelry, and sculpture. However, between the end of the Natufian culture in the Levant and the beginning of the earliest city-states in Sumer, there occurred a massive flood that deposited ten feet of silt over the earliest cities of the Fertile Crescent. Following this, Sumerian culture arose, as if fully formed, in possession of a written alphabet, a token exchange economy, and a social class structure. The post-Sumero-Akkadian Babylonian Kings list describes the eight kings who reigned in five cities prior to the flood thus. After the kingship descended from heaven, the kingship was in Iridu. In Iridu, Alalim became king. He ruled for 28,800 years. Alalgar ruled for 36,000 years. Two kings, they ruled for 64,800 years. Then Iridug fell, and the kingship was taken to Bad Tibira. In Bad Tibira, Enmen Luana ruled for 43,200 years. Enmen Galana ruled for 28,800 years. Dumuzi the shepherd ruled for 36,000 years three kings. They ruled for 108,000 years. Then Bad Tibira fell, and the kingship was taken to Larag. In Larag, Ensipid Zidana ruled for 28,800 years. One king. He ruled for 28,800 years. Then Larag fell, and the kingship was taken to Zimbir. In Zimbir, Enmendorana became king. He ruled for 21,000 years. One king. He ruled for 21,000 years. Then Zimbir fell, and the kingship was taken to Shuripak. In Shuripak, Ubaro Tutu became king. He ruled for 18,600 years. One king. He ruled for 18,600 years. In five cities, eight kings. They ruled for 241,200 years. Then the flood swept over. As we have seen, the most likely candidates for these five proto-cities are 1. Iridu, the area of Ain Akri, Ain and Malaha, and Abu Harea in the Levant. 2. Bad Tibira, the area of Neval Kore and Gobikli Tape in northern Mesopotamia. 3. Larach, the area of Jericho and Asikli Hayuk between the Levant and Mesopotamia. 4. Sipur, Katul Hayuk in northern Mesopotamia. 5. Shuripak, near Ein Gazal between the Levant and Mesopotamia. As I will seek to demonstrate in this lecture, these five Neolithic sites in the Levant region correlate to the towns in the Babylonian kings list because the eight given names of the priest kings who ruled in each also correspond to certain of the pantheon of city-state deities in Sumerian culture. Thus, the kings of ancient villages became deified into gods by the empires that arose after the flood. Session 3 a. The Anunnaki and Nephilim in Sumerian myth from prehistory to 4,000 years ago. Before the first written Torah, there was the vocal tradition of biblical myths, which in turn evolved from the original version of a biblical text composed some 8,000 years ago in Sumer. At that time, the lands of Mesopotamia were not a desert as they are now, but were lush and fertile, fecund with flora and fauna. 
the Sumerians codified the first collection of religious myths, which preserved explanations from prehistoric times for how the world of that time had come to be. For example, this proto-Bible described the reason the Fertile Crescent dried up into a desert as due to a nuclear war between the Pantheon that occurred in the region at the end of the Sumero-Akkadian Empire and the beginning of unified Babylon. This work describes aeons of prehistory in much more vivid detail than the Babylonian King's List's simplified format. According to the Sumerian Bible, the so-called Book of Enki, the priest kings of the prehistoric Neolithic settlements were actually extraterrestrial biological entities from a distant brown dwarf sister star to our own sun. They lived on a planet the Sumerians called Nibiru, but by the time of the writing of the Babylonian version of Genesis, the Enuma Elish, the name Nibiru was replaced by the empire's patron deity's name, Marduk. According to the Sumerian Bible of Enki, there were a long line of kings who reigned on the planet Nibiru prior to their discovery of life on our planet, Earth. Finally, it was King Anu, in pursuit of the criminal Alalu, who landed here and saw the potential for interplanetary cultivation by his alien species. Beginning from the earliest carvings in the late Paleolithic, such as the heart-shaped lovers of Ein Akri and the Ein Gazal double-headed dolls, we see the motif of the cross-breeding between early hominids and alien gods being portrayed according to the Sumerian interpretation. The earliest Sumerian artifacts show these EBEs in vivid detail. They portray them as the prototypical male and female precursor of Adam and Eve from Genesis. The male has an elongated skull and enlarged, empty, black, almond-shaped eyes. The female has reptilian facial features and nurses a child almost resembling a humanoid dinosaur. The Sumerian Book of Enki tells of how the children of King Anu, Prince Enki, Prince Enlil, and Princess Ninlil, came to Earth and cultivated the early hominid species into the form of the Natufian Neolithic culture. It calls this royal family the Anunnaki, meaning the Watchers, the original pantheon of Sumer. Those offspring of this royal lineage that were born not on Nibiru but on Earth were called the Nephilim. While the facial features and bone structure of the original Anunnaki from Nibiru appear entirely alien. The Nephilim appear as giant humanoids with elongated skulls. It is from the era of rulership by the Anunnaki we credit the discovery of agriculture and art. However, it is from the era of reign by the Nephilim that we trace the origins of writing and the arts. The myths describing the origins of agriculture and animal domestication as gifts from the gods date to the era of the Nephilim rulers, the aliens who were born on earth. Thus, it is from among the Nephilim generations we find five of the eight pre-diluvial rulers from the Babylonian king's list, following in generations from the original three Anunnaki who ruled earth. These three original gods established their kingdoms in three regions. To Enlil, the eldest, went the realm of the Tigris and Euphrates River. To Enki, the younger prince, went the realm of the Egyptian Nile River. To Nenlil, the princess and goddess, went the realm of the Indus and Ganges rivers in the Orient. Of course, by the time of the drying out into a desert of the Fertile Crescent, following the great flood of the Mesopotamian region, the three great civilizations had long since developed their own unique cultures, class structures, and metaphysics. By the time the terrestrial Nephilim ruled these regions, Inanna, the granddaughter of Ninlil, ruled the Vedic Aryans, the later Indo-Europeans, in the Orient, 
Ningish Zitta, the elder son of Enki, ruled Egypt, and the Babylonian patron deity, the younger son of Enki, Marduk, was the god over the culture of Babylon. It was Marduk who would later become Ashar, and in modern times is called Uhuru Mazda, the father of Zoroaster and the god of Zoroastrianism. It was said that, following the nuclear war between the Nephilim that left the Fertile Crescent a desert, when Marduk killed Inanna, whose name in Vedic was Kali, Ningish Zitta, whose name in Egyptian was Thoth, fled to the lands we call today South America.